I think investors get a bad rap in the realtor community and realtors get a bad rap in the investor community. Kind of, uh, and I think that's because sometimes their interests don't align. And then, you know, there's a lot of people that don't understand how the other person's job works and doesn't respect that job and you know the functions required. Welcome to the Real Estate Agent Success Tools interview series, where we interview successful agents and share their secrets with you. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. This is Chase Razor with EXP Realty. And today I've got the great opportunity to uh, chat with somebody who knows way more about real estate in all realms than I do. Uh, Tyler Combs, he's with Rarebird Real Estate and Investor Lab locally here in Portland, Oregon. And um, I'm just, I'm not going to get a whole lot into what Tyler does. I'm going to let him tell it to you. So tell us about you, Tyler, who you are, where you're at, and you know, how you started, uh, started in real estate in your journey. Thanks, Chase. That's a flattering introduction. Uh, I started in real estate in 2009, uh, right after the crash, and I uh, everyone was running away. So it seemed like I could apply the same uh, principle to you know uh, stocks as I as I could real estate. And so you know buy buy low, sell high. So I jumped in when uh, no one wanted real estate, and it was actually a really easy learning curve because of that. Um, I just started flipping houses, and then after flipping quite a few houses. Uh, I eventually got fed up with having a, a middleman involved on the exit. So I got my real estate license and then through uh, kind of learning how to how to run my real estate license, um, I started working with a lot of other investors and found I really enjoyed working with investor clients, um, probably my favorite type of client. Um, so. Uh, that's kind of how I, I got into the the niche that I did in in my in my brokerage uh, was when I you know just kind of getting my license for my own deals and then discovering that it's actually really fun to collaborate with other people and help them find and sell their deals too. Yeah, um, that's awesome. <clears throat> Excuse me. When I first got my real estate license, I was looking to hang my license with a uh, <clears throat> investor friendly brokerage. And I called a lot of other brokerages and kind of got the answer of we're not interested in your kind. And I was kind of shocked and like, didn't know what I was, didn't know what I was getting into, but I went to bigger pockets and spammed every agent across the land and said, where should I hang my license? And a couple different names came up. Um, yours and Mike's was one of them. And then Neil and Alyssa with Latitude. Um, and it was a really tough decision between the two. I ended up going to Latitude, but I went to Rare Bird for CE. Uh, I paid for your membership. I go to a lot of the Investor Lab events. So for people who don't know what Investor Lab is, what what is Investor Lab? Investor Lab is just a community of local Portland investors that are invested in each other's success. And so, you know, we do... Uh, the, the continuing ed stuff we do, the education stuff we do, none of it is from a guru. It's from like uh, local service providers or other investors just sharing about their deals, their experience, their, you know, we try to find experts in, in different fields. Uh, but the real value in that group is just the relationships that you build and the, the other people that are part of it that you can take out to lunch and pick their brain on any realm of, of topics. Um, and that's kind of, we, we built a, a group that is what we wish we had when we first got started because everyone I turned to when I first got started wanted, uh, there was so many strings, strings attached to the, the help they're willing to provide. They wanted like exclusive rights to all my deals or some sort of captive audience uh, in some way or to get paid for their mentorship. Um, and the Investor Lab is kind of a pretty special community because uh, people just want to help each other without a lot of strings attached. And I can speak firsthand to that and, you know, kind of you as a human being about, I've come to you for, with a lot of what I feel like are really dumb questions because I just don't have the experience. You've been more than willing to share your time. <clears throat> so I, I really appreciate that. Um, you recently published a document uh, called Developing Clients and Commissions, where you talk about the pros and cons of working with what you mentioned your favorite types of clients are 
investor clients. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, you know, maybe give us some of your best practices of working with investors. Sure. Yeah, I think investors get a bad rap in the realtor community and realtors get a bad rap in the investor community. Kind of. Uh, and I think that's because sometimes their interests don't align. And then, you know, there's a lot of people that don't understand how the other person's job works and doesn't respect that job and, you, you know, the functions required. Um, so I think a little bit of just knowledge inside and understanding and then kind of communication goes a long ways. Uh, but in my experience, there's there's a ton of pros working with those with, with investor when i say investor that can be you know we're talking about investors not that are you know investors that are interested in buying and selling real estate so that can be long-term hold investors that are buying up rentals that can be commercial residential uh it can be flippers um uh, you know, kind of, it, it doesn't really matter the type as long as they're interested in real estate and that's, you know, that is where their goals are oriented. Um, that's the kind of client that I'm, that I usually work with. So I'd say that the reasons for working with an investor might kind of my like top five or six. Uh, I, I like that they're supposedly non-emotional. Uh, that's not always the case, but you know they're supposed to be making rational investment decisions, right? So you can you can lay out and focus on their criteria, and you don't have to worry about trying to you know mitigate a lot of emotional um, lifestyle questions that they have if it's their owner occupied property. And then I my, one of my number one things is they're a repeat client. You know they uh, you, what is the I can't remember what the stat is, but I think it's you know at least every several years, you know, a repeat client in a normal residential transaction, it's gonna be a few years in between their purchases. Whereas, uh, especially high volume investor clients, you're doing multiple transactions with them a year on both the front and back end. So, uh, so that can be really helpful. And you can combine those transactions where if you're helping them find stuff, a lot of times you can work out deals where you're double ending the transaction, you're helping them sell on their exit. Um, and then, you know, depending on their motivation, uh, they, you know, especially the 1031 buyers or other people that have timelines, they're really ready to pull the trigger and transact. Uh, and it takes a little bit of weeding out to find those, but those are the type of investors I like to work with where they're re ready to transact, they're ready to pull the trigger, uh, they know what they want, or they're willing to help me refine their criteria. Um, and it, it opens the door to, they're looking for properties that your typical buyer may not be interested in. So you have a wide variety of opportunities to target with them um, versus your typical residential owner occupied buyer is really looking for move in ready. They're scared off by projects that need a lot of deferred maintenance remedied or, or you know, uh, projects in certain neighborhoods that they normally wouldn't want to live in. It just gives you a lot more options to kind of explore someone's investment criteria. So then just randomly off the top of your head, and you can completely make this up. If what do you sounds think like most of my answers, not, right? Yeah, me too. Uh, if, my clients, if you're watching this, everything's true. Uh, <laughs> uh, so would you say the lifetime value of a investor client is what? 3x, 5x, 10x, 20x, and I know it obviously depends on the type of client, but what, what, you know, and I think I've heard that it's once every seven to 10 years, somebody moves. So you might be able to. Yeah, uh, that's what I've heard. It's case. like a seven year cycle for your typical residential client. I mean, it really depends on the type of clients. Like if I picked up every investor client lead that I was given either, you know, through different forums and networks, uh, then it would be a terrible stat, but I've gotten pretty good at, at vetting people. So if you put the work in up front before you accept someone as a client and you understand what their buying cycle looks like and what the criteria is, then you should be, you know, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what the multiple is, but you should be doing multiple transactions a year with them, you know, anywhere from three to five on a minimum. Nice, nice. So now that we know like what some of the great pros are, what are some of the cons? Uh, I'd say the top, 
cons of working with investors and typically why they get a bad rap is that uh, you get you get a client that wants to make unreasonable low ball offers that you you know that can actually come back on your reputation if you're just shooting out arbitrary low ball numbers um, and a lot of people go to these seminars uh, about like how to wholesale or flip your first house. And those seminars say, just find a realtor and ask them to make offers. And you just basically calculate the value and then at offer 75% less than what that value is. And, you know, it's a shotgun approach of casting a wide net and one of them is going to get accepted. Well, that wastes your time as a broker that uh, erodes your reputation. It's just not, not anything that any buyer's broker, especially experienced buyer's broker is going to sign up for. So I'd say that's probably the number one reason why you don't want to work with an investor. Um, sometimes they want you to take reduced commissions. They promise you a high volume. And because of that high volume, they want to uh, essentially get your commission reduced or they want to you to kick back some of your commission back to them. Uh, and, you know, at the end of the day, if you're doing your job right, and you're helping them analyze the numbers, you're putting in just as much work as for any other client. So I never ever agree to reduce my commissions for, for investors, no matter what volume they promise. Uh, they can be high maintenance, especially if they don't know how to comp out properties or how to run their own numbers. They have don't have a great understanding of their criteria. They can be very high maintenance on the front end. And then when they get a property, sometimes they want you to help project management, project manage those projects that can be extremely high maintenance um, they can be disrespectful of your time uh, and they can waste the time there can be a lot of fruitless effort that comes out of that and there's an increased liability if they are flipping houses and they're not doing a high quality product they're not disclosing things properly there's a lot of liability there that uh, you have to navigate as a broker um, to make sure that, uh, you know, you're not representing someone that's lying on their disclosures or hiding a bunch of stuff. So I'd say those, those are the uh, pretty healthy dose of negatives when it comes to working with an investor. But those can all be kind of weeded out through a vetting process. Sure. And then, Tyler, I know you've given a lot of negotiation classes, so I'm going to throw a curveball at you. Yeah. Role play. Hey, Tyler, I'm an investor. I do 10 deals a year. I flip houses. Do you lower your commissions? Oh, I, I love this conversation now because I've uh, had it so many times. Um, I'd say, you know, that's awesome that you want to do that many transactions. I want to be involved in your journey. I bring a lot to the table. I know this market better than anyone. I negotiate better than anyone. And I'm going to earn my commission every penny of it. And if I folded and gave into uh, a, a price that is less than what I believe I'm worth, would you really want me negotiating with you? Or, or would you really want me to negotiate on your behalf? Yeah. What's important to you? Negotiation skills. Okay. So then what would it say about me if I gave up so quickly the money that I, I know I'm worth? Exactly. Yeah. Cool. Uh, awesome. Thanks for playing along on that. So we know some of the good, some of the bad, some of the ugly to working with uh, investors. What would you say like best practices are when working with investors? Um, I think it, it, it starts with making sure you're looking for the right person. So the my target investor that I'm looking for, I call the focused investor. So I want them to um, understand what they're looking for and what success means to them. So my you know, questions that I kind of check off the list as I'm interviewing a potential client, do they have a consistent thought out criteria? Do they have a clear exit strategy? Um, and owner occupying isn't an exit strategy. Uh, and if they say they want to flip, but then you find out they want to live in it, that's house hacking, which you know much more about, but, uh, but they're not going to be able to get the type of investor loans and they're not going to, um, you know, well, th that's a sidetrack, but it's not, it's not good if you get someone that's approaching you as an investor, but that ends up wanting to occupy the property. Um, does their loan match their or their financing, whatever they have in terms of their purchasing power? Does that match their strategy? And do they have a plan for funding that that property? 
Um, and will, is it adequate? Will that plan that they have for funding the property cover everything that needs to happen during all phases of their project? Got it. A man who has done lots with a lot of investors and invested um, a lot himself. Um, so I know you guys have a lot of events coming up. So if someone wanted to get a hold of you or learn more about Investor Lab or do a deal with you or work with you guys in any way, how would someone get a, get in touch with you? Um, well, they can go to rarebirdrealestate.com or investorlab.com to kind of see what the events we have coming up. Um, and uh, my email address is tyler at rarebirdrealestate.com. Um, and my Instagram is I am Tyler Combs. So I, any, any of those ways anyone can get a hold of me. Um, I love, especially, you know, if, if someone even from a different brokerage is working on a unique deal or with a really tough investor, uh, I've learned a lot about guarding your time, setting boundaries, um, and negotiating with investors. Uh, and I love talking shop with people. So, um, anyone listening to that, you're welcome to reach out to me and, uh, throw me your curveballs. I've done that. I can say that he's done and helped me out with that. So, Hey, Tyler, thanks a ton for your time. Um, I, uh, I can't say how much I appreciate it. Hopefully people got some good nuggets out of this and I will see you guys at your next event coming up. All right. Sounds good. All right, everybody have a great afternoon. Thanks for watching the interview all the way to the end. If you liked it, please comment down below and like the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you can stay up to date on everything that we put out. If you want to see more interviews just like this one, check out this playlist right here, or you can let YouTube help you out and watch this video right here.